Sunday mornings, there is some place that I am supposed to be. Keeps returning, the feeling keeps coming over me. Just like music, or like sunlight on a distant memory. Sunday mornings, Sunday mornings. My mother choosing what to wear. My father combs his jet black hair. We are their little prizes in our Mary Janes and clip-on ties. We hurry down the aisle. The neighbors smile because we're late again on Sunday mornings. There is some place that I'm supposed to be. Keeps returning. The feeling keeps coming over me, just like music or like sunlight on a distant memory. Sunday mornings, Sunday mornings. Daddy prays because. The money's tight. Mama prays she'll raise her children right. And my brother prays he'll change so he won't feel so very strangely out of tune. Loud and clear. You ask too many questions, dear, and I said you ask too few. That's why I still don't know quite what to do on Sunday mornings. There is some place that I. Sunday mornings, Sunday Well, good morning. I'm happy to have you all here with us for worship today. Uh, you may notice that this is not the same place that we were last week or even the week before that. This has been a movable feast. Um, our conference staff, as we had these decisions made in our states to try to encourage people to stay home and stay safe, um, encouraged ministers to do the same and to set an example. So when possible, uh, they've asked that ministers would go ahead and, and set things up at home and try to go ahead and lead worship as many of you are working from home and um, you know show that example that we can all do things to kind of change our life right now and to look after each other. Um, we started a little bit differently this morning. We have a lot of music and a lot of good things to share with you. Um, but one of the things uh, I wanted to do was to offer that song which talks about missing church and kind of starting to long for it um, for different reasons, not because the church wasn't meeting, 
Um, but as I thought about those words, I started thinking about how this feels very different for a lot of folks and how we might be having those feelings. Um, Susan Warner has been great. She's my favorite musician. She's been doing daily new songs and then Sunday evening concerts. And in fact, this evening on her Facebook page at seven o'clock, she's going to be doing songs from that album. Um, so I highly recommend it if you're at all interested. Uh, I have a few announcements to go ahead and share with you as we get started today. Uh, one is that, of course, our church office remains closed. Um, so please contact me if you need anything. Uh, Lisa's been getting the mail and, and checking the messages and getting back to folks. Our staff is working from their homes, trying to follow the example. Um, so uh, we're happy to help in any way that we can. And that includes the offers that we continue to make to say that if there are things that I can help you with myself pastorally, or if we can connect you to get uh, groceries, medication, uh, other things to help you out right now, whatever it might be, um, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to know um, to take care of each other. And I hope that folks are checking in on each other as well. Um, it's the best thing we can do right now. Uh, there are ways that folks are coming together uh, that are different nowadays. Our uh, youth group had its first ever Zoom online meeting and did that on Friday at 5, and that's, that's wonderful. They've decided to continue doing that each Friday at 5, um, so that's a really nice way to kind of come together. I wonder if we might do that as adults this week and go ahead and have a, a gathering time uh, a little bit later this week, so I think we're going to look into that. And then we have a Zoom account for the church now, so uh, if folks would like to use it for small groups or for meetings or other things, uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll get you keyed in. And that way you can invite as many people as you want and also not be limited in time like you are with the free account. Um, so we hope that that will, will help people out. Uh, I mentioned that uh, Susan Werner is doing online concerts. Other people are doing things online as well. And right here in our church, Andre, our music director each day, has been hopping on to Facebook Live and uh, practicing live with people and, and often kind of having them give input as to what he's playing. Um, so that's something to enjoy and, and to look into if you'd like to and to friend Andre. Um, Mary has been getting on our, our Facebook page for the church and posting a kind of a gratitude thought each day and asking people to reflect on something that they're grateful for. Um, so if you haven't been keying into that, I would encourage you to do it. It's really helpful in a time like this to be thinking about uh, not only the things that are struggles, but also reminded of the things that we enjoy so much and maybe we even more think about how much they mean to us now. Um, so encourage you to do those things. And of course, we love new ideas that folks have. There's a lot of questions about plans going forward. Our newsletter is about to come out, so you'll, you'll have more information. But just to know where we are in terms of our thinking, um, every indication we have is from the state and medical professionals that we're going to be doing this for a little while longer at the minimum. Um, so we're making plans right now for our worship to remain online over the next few weeks. On Palm Sunday, we'll have communion online, and there's some instructions coming for that. And uh, we'll have our Holy Week services, including Easter services, this way as well. Um, and we'll continue to reassess. Obviously, if things change before then, we will make, make the appropriate changes and we'll keep updating you as we move forward. But we want to make sure that we are not only being safe for each one of you, uh, but that we're looking out for each other. Um, so uh, we will keep you posted. As we get started today, uh, I want to go ahead and share a thought for meditation. And so I'm going to put this up here so you can see it as well. If you live in the dark a long time, and the sun comes out, you do not cross it into it whistling. There's an initial uprush of relief at first, then, for me anyway, a profound dislocation. My old assumptions about how the world works are buried, yet my new ones aren't yet operational. There's been a death of sorts, but without a few days in hell, no resurrection is possible. So maybe think about that, and um, it reflects both our journey towards Easter, but also maybe for a lot of folks, the kind of experiences that you're going through right now. I want to invite us all to join together in a time of prayer, and so I'll begin inviting the Holy Spirit for all of us, no matter where we are, uh, but then I will also go ahead and invite us all to say the Lord's Prayer wherever you are. So I'm going to put those words up on the screen uh, so that everyone can have them. Our Father... We pray to you this morning and we give thanks for you. As we gather, you come to us in many different ways. 
You come to us in the love of our family. You come to the, us in the care that people are showing. Uh, you come to us in the, the bravery of folks right now that are stepping up and providing for us medical care and food and all the things that we need so badly. Um, and we are really inspired uh, by what they are doing and maybe challenged to think about how we can be helping from where we are. God, as we move forward in these days, help us to know that we are bound together, that your spirit makes us one, that we're your body no matter where we are, and that we can look to you, look to you for guidance, look to you for comfort and strength, for inspiration, and for the blessings that you give us every day. We pray all these things even as we now join together and share the prayer our Savior taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I mentioned we have music, and we have some special guests that will be a part of this worship uh, through things that they've shared with me. Um, so now we're going to move to hearing Jesus, that joy of loving hearts that Andre is going to share. Thou joy of loving hearts, Thou fount of life, Thou light of light, Greater than pleasure earth imparts, Thy love is true and pure delight. Thy gracious word to those that on thee call, to them that seek thee, thou art good, to them that find thee all in all. O oh, Jesus, the sin of earth we pray, shed o'er the world thy holy light. So no, Andre is not right here, even though I'm sitting in front of the piano. I, I thought about maybe joking about how I was going to provide the music this morning, but I didn't want to scare everybody away right at the beginning of the service. Um, he uh, was happy to record those things from his studio there at his place. And um, we're really fortunate to have this technology so that folks can share things for us to be a part of our worship, even when we can't be together. Last week, I think the biggest hit of the whole service, judging by response, was that we were back to having children's time as part of the service. And also, we had, uh, during the week this week, a, a poll in terms of uh, which character would be featured in this children's time. Uh, so it was nice to get that feedback and have people involved and excited. I want to encourage you, as I'm about to show you children's time shared by Mary, um, to not miss something. So at the very beginning, be sure you look down to the bottom right of your screen, uh, because there is a special guest that makes an appearance as this gets started. But now I'll, I'll pass you along for our children's time from Mary. Hi guys, it's Mary coming to you not live from my living room. This was pre-recorded what is now yesterday. 
but it's today. I don't know what day of the week it is anymore. So I want to thank you all for putting in your votes for our special guest on this week's show. Um, so it was between Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey and Doug the Dog, and I'm very excited to announce to you the winner, which was Doug the Dog! Yay! Hi, Doug. So, <laughs> um, Doug is from the movie Up, which is a wonderful, wonderful movie. Um, my cat's getting jealous. She just popped over down here. So, <laughs> Up is great. I hope you all watch it this week with your uh, nice quarantine time. So when I was thinking about the message that I wanted Doug to share, I thought back to some of my favorite Doug quotes. So my absolute favorite Doug quote is, Hoy, I have just met you and I love you. Another one is, I was hiding under your porch because I love you. And another one is, Squirrel! Okay, so except for the last one, they're all pretty much commonly themed with love. So that's my favorite thing about Doug, is he just embodies love. There's no questions, no qualifiers, and no second guessing. He just loves. So as we're all figuring out our new lifestyles in Corona times, I thought Doug would be a great reminder of one of my favorite four letter words, and you can probably guess what it is, Love. L-O-V-E. Love others and love yourself. There's, there should be no questioning if you're worthy or if someone else is worthy or if you know them well enough. And just to be clear, I'm not advocating that you go out on the streets and say I love you to super random strangers. It's not a good safety practice. But tell your friends, tell your family, tell your classmates, tell your teachers. These are people who you love. So right now, with the state of the world, it is not the time to be stingy with love. Show it any way and every way that you can, with six to ten feet apart from the other person, and say it loud and say it proud. I love you. See you guys next week. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um... It's a treat, again, that we're able to go ahead and to offer that. And you can see that Mary had some assistance uh, there in, the, in the, the shooting and that Doug coming on screen. And a little bit later, you're going to see her helper uh, actually assist with some special music after our readings. Um, I want to invite us uh, to take a moment and just to gather ourselves and to ask for God's healing and forgiveness and uh, guidance for our lives as we move forward. So if you don't mind, join with me in a time of prayer. God, no matter where we are or when we are experiencing this, we ask that you would go within our hearts and our lives, that you would help us to know that you look upon us not trying to find fault or trying to go ahead and accuse or judge, but rather to know us fully for who we are, to love us truly for who we are and who we can be, and to try to guide us forward when we find that we've stumbled, when we're hurting, when we're grieving our choices, when we find ourselves feeling more and more lost and away from you or away from others. God, you are the mender. You're the healer whose power is incredible, and we're going to hear more about that in our scripture in just a little bit. We ask that you'd help us to have faith and confidence in what you can do in our lives. So even as we open up and we confess and we ask for all the help that you can give, we pray, God, that you will continue to be a part of everything in our life and that you will help to guide us forward with a new sense that no matter what happens, you will never abandon us, you will always love us, and there's nothing so bad or so wrong or so broken that you cannot mend it over time. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Well, now that we have this capability to share folks in different places, um, that opens up also the possibility maybe to go back to having other folks read the scripture, which would be lovely. Um, this Sunday, we have two rather long readings, but honestly, they're going to do a lot of the preaching. Um, 
I'm going to put up on the screen what the readings are, and you are welcome to go ahead and to uh, find them. In, in You can search them online. You can pull out your Bible and look, um, but to read along if you want to. And um, these are long ones, so I'm sure if I had uh, had a reader sign up to go ahead and do this, uh, this would have been one of those where uh, they would have uh, given me those big eyes on Sunday morning about why was I picking on them or, 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 or singling them out. So first, a reading from Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 through 14, and you're going to hear the very familiar description of the dry bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and I, I prophesied, and as I did it, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Amen. Our second reading, also very familiar, um, is a powerful story about Jesus hearing terrible news about one of his dearest friends and the decisions that he makes and the miracle that he offers. It's John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. As I said, these are lengthy readings today, so please feel free to read along um, and to go ahead and to experience this. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. 
Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get, go, get up quickly and go out, and they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Thanks be to God for these readings, for this sharing. Now I'd like to offer a time just to reflect on what we've heard. And so uh, Mary and Kevin are going to go ahead and share some special music with us.
I hope you enjoyed that. It's really special to be able to have, again, these gifts shared. And we have um, some more music in a, a little bit here, including a, a special song uh, that was written for our stewardship uh, campaign that we are in the middle of. I know it seems crazy um, to think about that after everything changed so rapidly. As I said, today uh, the scripture um, had a lot contained in it. And um, in many ways, it, it, it speaks for itself. Uh, of course, that never stopped any minister ever uh, from trying to go ahead and add on a few words. Uh, I've had a tradition so far uh, in this season of trying to think about the funniest things uh, that I've heard or seen around me uh, each week uh, that kind of give some light in the middle of uh, sometimes some difficult times. One of the things I liked the most this week was uh, someone had written out, written out and said uh, that this was the lintiest lint ever. And um, I really like that. Uh, it does feel like um, maybe sometimes that's a time where we don't do a lot with it. Uh, a lot of folks just stay just as busy as they were. They maybe don't get down to that kind of spiritual house cleaning or pause or Sabbath or kind of more time for reflection or reading or kind of deepening of prayer or any of those things. We, we talk about it, but... It's like exercise, it's like eating right. Sometimes we talk a good game, but uh, our lives don't change dramatically. Um, and uh, there's kind of an enforced change that's happening right now. So it is uh, definitely the lintiest Lent ever, I think. Um, it's also a time where you can look at these uh, incredibly powerful passages from Scripture and hear them in a whole new way. Uh, our first passage from the prophet Ezekiel um, I mean, it is such such gripping imagery to have God, you know, bring Ezekiel to kind of see this figurative landscape, to see these dry bones. And, you know, again, we're just given this description that how absolutely dry and lifeless they are. Um, and the words that are used there, when you kind of plumb out the different meanings they could have, it goes beyond just kind of lack of water. It's 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 kind of the aridness of of life that is kind of bereft of everything um, and what that feels like. And as Ezekiel's there and God is, is talking about what do you see and then talking about do you think it's possible uh, for there to be new life here, um, God employs Ezekiel to go ahead and make that happen, you know, and says, you speak to these bones and that's going to go ahead and give them new life and then give them purpose as to what they're supposed to do once they have that new life. And you're going to give them hope and tell them that I'm going to go ahead and even after new life, bring them back to be where their hearts long to be after this time in exile, living away uh, from friends and family and home. There's a lot of things there that connect. Um, there is a feeling of exile for a lot of folks right now, and it's hard not to be in the same kind of connection and proximity and closeness that we, we, we really come to take for granted. Um, it feels like a time of waiting. We don't know when it's going to end, and, and so we're caught in this, this state of limbo, just uh, continually not able to make plans and wondering kind of what the future is and does this kind of last and last and last. Uh, I had the experience of going to the grocery store yesterday, and um, let me just reflect that when they keep giving those announcements about staying six feet away from everybody, that's impossible in a grocery store, at least my experience, when the aisles aren't even that wide. Um, so there's a very vulnerable feeling about being amongst folks, and I'm sure much more for people who are more at risk and, and uh, health-wise. Um, but as I made my way through the grocery store, I had a similar experience to what a lot of people have shared, which is I got to certain aisles, uh, obviously the paper goods and the cleaning products aisles especially, and uh, there was literally nothing. It was completely empty. It looked like they were getting ready to redecorate or something. And it's not something we're used to seeing. And in a way, it felt like that kind of, not in, not in a complete way, but kind of the dry bones experience of scarcity and um, a feeling of, is it going to just stay this way? Is is this how it is now? Um, are the things that we just take for granted and need every day, or are these going to be things we now have to worry about? Um, we certainly have people who remember what that's like from past experiences, and we have the stories that have been shared with us, but a lot of people don't have that firsthand. It's not that different when I was a boy and uh, we traveled to Berlin took the train through uh, East Germany, and you, of course, couldn't get out until you got there to the, the part of Berlin that was controlled uh, by Western states, and we went there, and then there was one day we got to go on a bus and go into the other side of Berlin, past the wall, 
Uh, they checked everything thoroughly both ways. Um, and we went in and one of the things they wanted us to do was to go into a department store because if we would spend the money that we had, that was very valuable to have more of that currency uh, there for them. But, you know, there was nothing. I mean, <laughs> there, there was really nothing that you would ever want that was there in stock. And um, there are people who are very used to that. There are people who are very used to that now in life or don't even have the luxury of a grocery store. Um, for us, it's mostly new. It may feel like it's going to stretch out on and on, like this is kind of a final thing, at least in our hearts, even if our minds know differently. Um, we're in that kind of dry place. One of the things we are hearing is that God can bring life back into the driest of places, but also that God wants to employ us to go ahead and help to bring that life back, to be able to speak a word of hope to others when they are feeling like it's something that can't change, that's reached its conclusion, uh, that we can go ahead and speak and say that's not true, that there are good things ahead and we can trust in the same God who got us this far. We can trust in the people that God has created and given such magnificent abilities because of what they can do. We can know that this is not how it will always be and we can be a people of hope and we can go ahead and share that light and that love with others and help to see them through just like Ezekiel did. Bringing a word of comfort is one of the greatest gifts we can give. Now, a laugh is something I also appreciate. And we have this other passage where we hear about Jesus and hearing the word about his dear friend, Lazarus. We think about Mary and Martha a lot. And so in those initial encounters, Lazarus is not so featured for us in the conversations and the engagement and the choices about what they do in Jesus's presence. Um, but when he hears this word, it obviously uh, stirs him deeply that, that Lazarus is dying. Um, and, and when we reflect on this passage, it's interesting because there are so many very serious messages. And yet as ministers are spending time talking to one another and trying to kind of uh, connect and reflect on how does this speak to us now, um, I really had some literal laugh out loud moments at uh, a few of the thoughts that some pastors had in reflecting on this online. Um, one of them said, you know, uh, people probably maybe want to be like Lazarus, which is, I'm not sure, a hope that anybody has unless they are at a point where they're thinking that death might be near, and then definitely you might hope for that. Um, but he was saying, no, like, uh, you know, it's, it's incredibly desirable if you think about it, because there he was wrapped in bandages. And so he said right away, he's got some toilet paper. Uh, so he's all set up. And then he said he gets to come out of his tomb. Uh, so maybe we're jealous uh, that, that stone gets rolled away and that he's out there uh, free and clear. Um, and I thought that was unexpected. Um, and it, it, got me, it got me thinking about it in a different way. Of course, somebody came right back with that pastoral word that we're supposed to be offering to communities right now and said, like, what are you talking about? The first thing they should have said to Lazarus was stay inside. Um, so uh, that would be a different, definite different twist on the story, just like it's a different time for us now. Um, but I really appreciated that folks were playing around with this and, and having a light heart as they, they kind of reflected on it and, and tried to think about this in a new way. There are so many pieces to the story and there's not time to go ahead and deal with it all this morning. As I said, there's more gifts that are still on the way here in this worship service and I don't wanna get a reputation for being even longer online than I am in person because uh, we all know what that is. Um, but I, I do wanna just touch on a few things real quickly. One of them is that wrestling that people often have when they, when they think about um, Jesus and that delay uh, that he spends time before coming to Lazarus. And so many people question that. The disciples question, why come after waiting? When he does go there, the folks that have been there to be mourners are wondering, well, if he had come, couldn't he have changed all this? All those what ifs, if we were driving the bus, if we were in charge of the direction, those are questions that we have all the time. But right now, as we struggle with this big picture that's going on, so many times we may be kind of trying to process and think, well, why isn't this going differently? And, and why doesn't God intervene in everything? Um, and we may be struck with those same kind of struggles and there's no reason not to go ahead and wrestle with them. In this case in scripture, we hear there's a very good reason. Uh, not that he didn't want to help Lazarus, didn't love him. Clearly he loved him. When he comes there, again, the King James Version has the shortest and most powerful verse in the Bible. In that translation, it says, Jesus wept, two words, when he makes it to the tomb. Uh, he's grieving. 
And he's grieving even though he knows that he can bring Lazarus back to life with God's help. He's grieving not because he lacks hope or um, believes that everything is lost. It's not true. But he's grieving because you can have hope and you can believe things are going to turn out okay and, and you can have confidence and faith and all of those things. And it's still okay to feel sad and to think that right now this is incredibly hard and you have those things, but that doesn't mean you're not struggling. His love for Lazarus is written there on his face as he weeps. It's okay if we have some tears, if we struggle as well. It doesn't speak any less of us. For him, he delays so that he tells those around him he can show them. He can help them to have more faith, more belief, more hope to know that even dying doesn't separate us from the love of God. And he waits long enough so that even those who have beliefs around how long the spirit might linger, well, that they would think it's way too late now. There's just absolutely nothing that's, that's possible now. And he tries to show them nothing is impossible with God. And it's a message that um, we need to be reminded of uh, sometimes really powerfully. When Jesus comes and offers that gift, um, it's a powerful moment. When he brings life into uh, that moment of hopelessness, it changes everything for everyone there. Sometimes we don't know when those miracle moments are going to come, when everything's going to change in the blink of an eye or slowly or through the intervention of people gifted with amazing mind and talent and abilities and teamwork, all these things that God helps us to find. But God does it all the time, and we have to believe in that. Before he ever raises Lazarus up, uh, Jesus is there and he's speaking, and he says... I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes in me will never die. And not having brought Lazarus back to life at this point, just having arrived in the midst of all that grief, when he says all of that, he speaks to Martha and he says, Do you believe this? In that hopeless time, in her grief. And she says, Yes. She says it profoundly. She says it completely. She professes her belief in who Jesus is and what that means. Can we find that same kind of hope, even if we're grieving, even if we're struggling, even if there's a lot more on our plate than just what's happening in the world? Can we find strength in that? Can we move forward from that? I think when we hear this experience and we hear about Lazarus coming out from that tomb and the happiness that kind of floods in, we think about these folks that experience this firsthand, the chances are that they have now seen what seems like one of the worst moments in their life. And then they've come through on the other side with a realization that there's something amazing that can still happen. I have no doubt that because of that, they were more resilient. They were able to face even greater challenges. They knew that they didn't have to do it by themselves. I wonder if we won't be the same as we move forward, never realizing what we were capable of, what we could do together, what we could do with God, until maybe this moment. How much stronger will we then be moving forward Trusting in God, trusting in each other, believing that though the world can change overnight, the one thing that's not going to change is God's love for us and what we can do for others if we turn around and share it with them and speak a word of hope in a world that needs it badly. Amen. Well, I mentioned other gifts that are going to be shared here as part of this. Um, Patty, our stewardship chair, had hoped that today would be a day where we would come together at church and we would dedicate our pledges, which I hope that folks are sending in. We still need them. We still need to go ahead and plan and move forward because this is not going to last forever. Uh, it's like planting seeds. Uh, we know there's going to be a time where we don't see anything, any progress, but uh, in a while we're going to see amazing things happen. 
And at the church, those amazing things happen because of you, because of your volunteerism and because of the way you support it. Um, so please do continue to dedicate uh, those gifts, to pray about them. You should have some time to do that now um, and to offer your support and to, to send that in. Normally, this Sunday, Patty was going to go ahead and to share with you a special song once again that she wrote for this occasion. Um, so she's been kind enough to record this uh, so that we could go ahead and offer it here. So as you think about the ways you can support uh, the church by sending in your continued support and gifts, um, and then also you can uh, lift up anything you can do for others. And again, Gifts of Love is an example of one agency that can really use everything we can do right now. Uh, I'm going to share this song with you once again that Patty has written and performed. We thank Patty not only for that music, but also for being willing to be the chair of the stewardship campaign. And this is going to go down in history as the um, the strangest time to try to go ahead and do it. Of course, we couldn't know that just like you couldn't know this was going to happen. Um, but it's just for a time. And uh, we are looking towards the future. And um, we hope that you'll be a part of that with us. I want to invite everybody as we move to the end of our service to think about how we can be a part of helping not only in our church, but all the different ways we can reach out to each other, and that includes prayer. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd invite us to do that. And again, I'm not going to share specific names of prayers because this is available to anyone online, um, but I welcome any prayer requests that you'd like to share with me. I'll put those on the prayer care line at church. Um, and uh, if you'd like to be on that email list, please let me know so I can add you onto it. So let's join our hearts together now. God, as we worship together, um, we ask that you would search our hearts and you'd hear as we open up to you, not only right now, but each day, each moment, whenever we need to or want to. Uh, this practice of beginning each day with a moment of gratitude and reflection on one specific way that we're blessed in our life, um, it is a beautiful practice and it helps us to think about all the things we have to give thanks for because that list can keep going and going and going and we know it. There's not an end to it. So thank you, God. 
Thank you for all the ways you're reaching into our lives. Thank you for the ways that you are guiding us through a difficult time. Thank you for binding us together in ways that we don't even really understand fully, but that your spirit makes possible. God, where there are people right now who could use even more, we ask that you, first of all, would respond. If they need healing in their life, if they need a feeling of comfort and presence, if they're grieving and they're in that time of loss and they need to feel that light on their face, if they are seeking for wisdom and guidance, if they are seeking to go ahead and to find ways to care for others in a time where it's been made incredibly difficult, God, please, please respond. But even more importantly, we want to offer our prayers of support and we want to ask if there are ways we can be a part of that, help us to know and then help us to be brave enough to respond. And especially, as always, we want to think about those who are basically on the front lines at this time, the people who are making sure that we have food in our restaurants, trying to support them in an incredibly difficult time, small businesses uh, that are just so uh, affected by this, and we need to find ways to help to, to lift them up and their families and their people that are connected to them. Those people who are offering care to those who are sick, who are elderly, who are doing these things to the best of their ability and uh, taking great risks. Um, and we are so grateful for their bravery and for what they are doing because it's needed so much right now. We ask God that you would be with each one of them and their families as they step up even more than they have so powerfully through their lives. God, these are just some of the prayers that we have on our minds right now. There are so many more. We ask that you'd search our hearts and you'd find them. And you know the prayers that we lift up. You know us. But when we do it, God, we connect with you in a whole different way. So we offer ourselves to you, and we offer it in service, we offer it in fellowship, and we offer it in faith. Amen. As we get near the end here, I want to just share another piece of special music, and so we'll have another hymn uh, here at the, sur at the end. Uh, Andre's going to share Comfort You, My People, and then I'll close us with a prayer.
shall see the token that God's word is never broken. I want to thank you for joining us today and um, or whenever you get a chance to check this out. Uh, if you have feedback, we certainly welcome it. Be gentle. Uh, it's been a real learning curve. Um, as much as I love technology, every part of this has been new. Um, maybe I will tour around uh, to different locations as uh, we share some of this. Uh, maybe I'll go out since I'm at my estate, you know, on the tennis courts, the basketball court, the golf links, whatever I've got back here and uh, get some more picturesque views uh, for future worship uh, um, when it's not raining outside. Um, but uh, I'm grateful uh, for you being here. I'm grateful for the flexibility of Andre and Mary and Kevin and Patty and the way that they came together and um, worked to get their pieces in here. I'm grateful for you being a part of this. Um, I'm grateful for everybody who's a part of our church and then the wider community that's been able to be a part of this, uh, even if they're at a distance. I hope it's meaningful. Um, I hope it's helpful in some way. Um, and as we move towards Holy Week, um, I hope that this can be a way that we can connect and think about how our faith and our purpose in life and the gifts that God have give, has given us um, help us to deal with not only this, but everything we encounter. Uh, we had St. Patrick's Day a little bit ago, um, which, you know, we had that. We had snow at the beginning of the week. We had, we're getting everything right now. Um, but I thought I would uh, close with um, uh, a Celtic uh, blessing uh, this morning. So let me just share this as our, our parting words. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. So blessings and peace. Amen. <laughs>